Mike Paz. Good evening, members of the board, audience. Listening to all of what was said in the paper, the propaganda about what was going on, there might be fact in the paper, there's also fiction in that paper. Listening to what's going on, there's a lot of he said, she said, who's got the proof, who doesn't have the proof. It does need time for it to be worked on. As a member of this community, and as an employee of the school district, I've also been involved, if a lot of you know me, I've been with the basketball program at NFA for 30 years, okay? I've been with, Mick, with coaches from the 80s through the 90s, and why do I get involved in it? Because I care about these kids. I work with these coaches, okay? We try to save the best we can to help these kids to lead them on the right course. Should we start passing blame? Let's put the blame on everybody, okay? First and foremost, the kids are responsible for committing the crime. Okay, that's first thing. They, nobody programmed, nobody put a gun in the head, hey, go skip. They did it. I know when I was a kid, nobody put a gun in my head, I skipped class. And I paid the price. My mom and dad would uh, do what they had to do. But this day and age, times have changed. The kids are gonna try to take things to, an, to another extreme. We gotta keep up with the times. Some people still believe in the old school method how to handle things. You gotta work with these kids. You gotta give the best they can. But to start pinpointing, oh, the head basketball coach is fault. The administrator, it's her fault. You're pointing fingers. Rather than pointing fingers, let's start working together on this, okay? I've been around with a lot of kids. All I hear is negative things that comes out of the newspaper. I hear negative things in the crowd. Sure, everybody's, everybody's got beef, everybody's got concerns. But if you're gonna resolve this situation, you need to work together on this, not try to throw bombs at each other. Because the bottom line is, who are we hurting? Yeah, I know, I see faces over there. Who are we hurt? We're hurting the kids. We gotta work together. If you got differences, that's fine. But you all gotta be on the same page with one another. I do my part, there are times I, people don't know what I do with these kids. I've helped them when they need a ride home because mom and dad is either working late. They need a dollar here, right, so they can get something to eat in school because that times are tough. I don't care about that. I do it because I want to see these kids try to succeed in basketball. Basketball is a two to get out, but they still got to make the grade. So the way I put it is, the kids are still responsible for what they committed. Their guardianship is also held accountable for. And I would say the school body as well. And we all need to work together, not try to, to span it and break it apart. We got to work together. Thank you, Mr. Paz. Your comments have been reported by the board clerk. Greer Cooper. Good evening. My name is Greer Cooper. I am a resident of the town of Newburgh. I've had three children to go through and graduate from the school district, neither one of them unscathed. And I have to agree that there are numerous people in the district, in the buildings, from teachers, um, security guards, janitors, um, administrators, clerical staff, who are part of the community who support these children, or who want to see them do well, and who are there to make sure they do right. But that does not take away the fact that there are questionable practices that are harmful. In the year 2000, I wrote an editorial that appeared in the Times Herald Record sports section. It dealt with the NFA boys varsity basketball team having to forfeit games because the team included academically ineligible players. Eleven years later, we await the findings of a forensic study and an internal investigation to determine how this practice has managed to continue. But the issue in 2000, as well as today, is far deeper than sports. There is a culture in the Newburgh and Large City School District that fosters callous indifference towards some on a variety of fronts. At the root of this abuse and neglect is the subjective manner in which decisions are made. Self-serving dismissive decisions that lead to discrimination and disproportionality in such things as hiring, disciplinary actions, placement in special ed and that wasteland twilight program, 
or fielding a team of non-academic student athletes. When people with power and privilege deny opportunity or act in ways that limit access and quality to others, there's a word for that. And it's not pretty. It's called racism. And I can hear it now. Oh, don't start playing the race card. Maybe it's cronyism or maybe patronage or the good old boy system. But you know what? Whatever you want to call it, more often than not, children and adults of color get the short end of the stick in this district. We have to open our eyes, remove the veil, and call this ugly stuff just what it is before we can address it and begin the healing. Now, as we await the final report, one can't help but wonder what will come of it all. Certainly, we don't need another task force or focus group. For one thing, we don't need the facade of community involvement. Plus, we already know what happened. And the board president is to be applauded for confirming that policies already exist regarding participation in school athletics. The fact is, those policies were ignored. So where will the buck stop? Without question, there is blame to go around. These young men didn't do what is expected of students, attend class and put their best effort forward. The parents, for whatever the reason, were not on top of their responsibilities. But neither students nor parents are responsible for policies, and nor are they paid to ensure that those policies are enforced. And anyone involved who honestly believed they were helping these young men was sadly and hopelessly misguided. The NTA reported bringing facts directly to administration, and the district's internal audit has surely revealed conclusive evidence of who knew what and what was done when and when. As a result of the actions or inaction of adults in the district, these young men came to believe that there were no consequences for their behavior. Their misbehavior was enabled in pursuit of a feather in NFA's cap and they were taught the rules can be sidestepped. But in the final analysis, these students were denied an education. Education, the fundamental ingredient for a leg up in life, for self-sufficiency, and for being a contributing member in one's community. But equally as shameful, they were shown that their prowess and their brawn were more important than their minds. The district is complicit in compromising these young men's self-esteem today. It's not enough for school officials to be good managers. They must be educational leaders. And if they are, the development of every child, academically and socially, would be their foremost concern. But you cannot legislate caring and decency. That's got to come from the heart. In 2011, just as during the 1950s, 60s civil rights era, it may just take an outside legal entity to finally ensure some quality for everyone in the Newburgh schools. The NAACP is to be applauded for pledging its considerable national resources towards spotlighting the numerous and varied concerns in the Newburgh district and initiating some real change. For far too many years, the Newburgh and Large City School District has demonstrated a poor track record for policing itself. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Your comments have been recorded by the board of clerks.